In this section, we will talk about primary and secondary metabolites. Now, metabolites term is given to all those substances which are formed during various metabolic reactions. So, primary metabolites are those which have a specific function and we have understood their specific function very, very clearly. For example, proteins, amino acids, carbohydrates, fats and nucleic acids. These are considered as primary metabolites including their mono units. When we are talking of nucleic acids that is DNA and RNA, so metabolites, primary metabolites would also include nucleotides and nucleosides. So all these because their functions are very clearly understood. For example, if we take proteins, we know that proteins are important constituents of plasma membrane. Our plasma membrane is made up of proteins and phospholipids. So that role is very, very specific and we clearly understand it. Uh, proteins are contractile proteins like actin and myosin. Immunoglobulins, they are also proteins. Hemoglobin also has a protein part. So a protein has specific function. Similarly, nucleic acid, DNA has its specific role, RNAs, all three types have their specific roles. Such metabolites are called primary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are those substances which are produced by living organisms. They are found in the body of living organisms, but till date we are not very clear about their specific functions. We'll take some examples and try to understand why they have been kept under secondary metabolites. Say if we talk of morphine, caffeine, codeine, why are these synthesized or produced by a plant? Caffeine, for example, because we are very much aware of this substance, we'll take this example. Caffeine is present in the leaves of tea plant, that is Theosinensis. Caffeine is also present in the beans of coffee plant. So why has the plant produced this caffeine? What role is caffeine playing in the plant? Some scientists believe that it is the waste material which is produced by the plant and this waste is stored in the leaf or in the beans because leaves are going to fall off when they mature. Similarly, the beans, that is the fruit, is also going to fall off. So when the fruit or the leaf falls off, that waste would also be uh, lost from the plant. But the other than the waste material, there is no reason why this uh, substance is produced. Another substance which can be taken into this category is nicotine. Why is this nicotine produced? Nicotine again is found in the leaves of tobacco plant. Some scientists believe that this substance is an insect repellent. That means it repels the pests and that is why this substance is produced by the plant. But the other group of scientists, they think that if it is insect repellent, then every plant should produce it. How do other plants are uh, able to repel those uh, insects? And if it is not nicotine, there is some other substance. So again, not very clearly understood. Third important substance which we are talking about here, rubber. Why is rubber secreted by a plant? And when we talk of rubber, when rubber tree produces this rubber, this is a thick uh, exude which is released from any cut or wounded part. Rubber we know is impervious to gases and uh, water. So if plant is having a coat of rubber on its outer surface, it is actually creating a barrier layer for gaseous exchange and we know without gaseous exchange the plants will not be able to survive. So why would this plant produce this rubber? Oils for example, 
Why are oils produced by the plants? So, because we are not very sure about the reasons why the plant is producing these substances and what is the specific role which is performed by these substances. And that is why they are kept under secondary metabolites. So, if we have to categorize, primary metabolites are those substances whose roles are clearly understood and secondary metabolites are those whose role is not clearly understood. Now we will discuss few important elements, the mineral elements. Now when we talk of mineral elements, there are 17 essential elements for plants. Essential in case of plants and 24 are essential in animals. We'll take some important uh, points here. The most abundant element is calcium. Most abundant is calcium. In cellular pool, that means when we are talking of the cytoplasmic content, most abundant in cellular pool. Cellular pool is potassium. And the most abundant in body fluid is sodium ion. So these are certain important ones which we have to remember. One more uh, thing that we can write here. The most abundant protein in the organic world that is in the living world. Most abundant protein in the living world is rubisco that is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase enzyme the enzyme which plays a very important role in photosynthesis artificial silk is a carbohydrate or a polysaccharide artificial silk is polysaccharide whereas true or natural natural silk is a protein and these proteins which are there they're actually polyamides like fibrin and serine so these are important uh, proteins which are found in silk fiber or silk proteins which we call so natural silk which is produced by the silk moth the larva is a protein whereas artificial silk which we synthesize in factories is a polysaccharide and most abundant is rubisco most abundant protein is rubisco if we talk of this is most abundant in the living world if we talk of most abundant protein in animals then it is collagen collagen which is in the tissues that collagen is the most abundant protein amongst the animals but in general if you're talking about the living world then it is rubisco that is ribulose by ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase that is the full form of it and primary and secondary metabolites so these are few more important biomolecules which play a role when we talk of these minerals we can take all minerals understand their function specifically for example if we talk of magnesium then magnesium is essential for chlorophyll synthesis because it makes the core of chlorophyll molecule magnesium also is essential for ribosomal assembly so if chlorophyll is not synthesized due to deficiency of magnesium then there would be chlorosis if no chlorophyll rate of photosynthesis would be less plant will have stunted growth all these things we take up in the chapter of mineral nutrition in plants so we are not going into details of all those things secondary metabolites we don't know their role we can add one more secondary metabolite here 
may be here. The, there are certain pigments. For example, carotene. We know carotene is present in carrot. It is a reddish, orangish red pigment. And carrot, the color of carrot is because of this uh, carotene. Now, wh what is the role of a pigment basically? The role of pigment is either to absorb light for photosynthesis or to impart color to a particular part of the plant so that the pollinating agencies can be attracted. So insects can be attracted for pollination or animals can be attracted for dispersal of seeds. Carrot is underground. It grows underground. It is a root which grows underground. So if a structure which is underground, what uh, significance does color have when the thing is underground? It is neither attracting anything for pollination nor for seed dispersal. Then why is this structure colored? We don't know that. And that is why such pigments are also kept under secondary metabolites. So with this part, we are done with the basic biomolecules. Now in the next segment, we'll start with enzymes.